there's actually, there are four major ones, there are six, but we will discuss 10 uh, in, and we will just go through them. You can look through that, look and read more about them later on in your own free time. But this gives, an, gives, gives us an idea on what is out there. And if you want to know what type of leadership, what type of leader you are, or what type of manager you are, there are again tests, personality tests online that can help you determine uh, the type of leadership that you have. Okay. So the first one is transactional leadership. Okay. So as the word says, or, you know, as the description says, it everything is just transactional. Uh, these uh, the, the type of members that are un under this type of leadership are the ones who just agree. No questions asked. Whatever they're told, they just follow. Uh, the transaction usually involves the organization paying key members to return um, in return for their effort and uh, compliance. So a perfect example would be probably your in in our environment in our. Uh, culture, your security guards, your um, your rank and file people, nah, you tell them what to do and they just do it. You know, uh, wala silang sariling kusa. So those are your employees. So if you're a transactional leader, you're usually probably, you're usually part of the military, no? uh, high level members of the military, high, high, there's some CEOs, and if you're into K drama, just do it. Those conglomerate who, who watches K drama here. Yeah, nako marami tayo. So diba when they when they tell you, when they tell their sons and daughters, no questions asked, just do it. This is what I told you to do, and you just have to do it. Those are your transactional leaders. Um, some of the NFL coaches are known to be transactional leaders. Most Asian conglomerate heads, especially in Korea, where uh, their culture is really, really different. Next is the autocratic leadership. Okay, Now, the autocratic leadership is where leaders have complete power over their people. Staff members have little opportunity to make suggestions as well. And even if these would have been in the organization, they are often unheard. Okay. Um, their autocratic leadership often leads to high turnover, especially in the generation that we have now. Why? Because our millennials do not want to be just told what to do. They want to find reason why they have to do it. They want to find value in what they do. So if you have an autocratic leader telling you also something like transactional, no? Autocratic, walang relationship. Also, just do what I need you to do and no questions asked. Uh, military personnel also has this. Uh, Napoleon, Adolf Hitler were the, were the leaders who had autocratic personalities. And the downside to this is, of course, your employees will feel very stiff. No? But on the good side, if you're an autocratic leader, decision-making is fast. Kasi galing lang sa isang tao. Wala nang isip-isip. Uh, next is bureaucratic. Ayan. Ito naman, with the um, root word bu bureau bureaucracy, okay, uh, bureaucratic leaders work by the book. Okay? They follow strict rules and they just have to comply. Okay? Uh, this appropriate, this type of leadership for work involving serious safety risks. So this one naman works, the leadership here works for people who are in the um, high-risk companies. Yung kailangan may step-by-step step or else if you do not follow, something wrong might happen. But you have leaders who do not, who are not flexible. These are your bureaucratic leaders. Yung naiinis ka na kasi pwede namang i-bend ng konti ang rule but they don't want to do it. It's they're safe. They do not want to take risks. But these leaders are the who are not risk takers. Uh, these people are best when they work for manufacturing industries. Uh, the downside of these leaders of of this leadership style is it's ineffective for teams 
who want flexibility, who wants uh, creativity and innovation. So if you are a bureaucratic leader, most of the time, these are the leaders where they are of age. Yung sasabihin nila, nasubukan na yan. Na, na it's been tried and tested. It has worked in the past. It will still work now. We just have to follow. So those are the type of leaders. Um, bureaucratic leaders um, have, they have to follow the strict chain of command, uh, strict regulation, and Con you need confirmation from the follow from their followers. People who are bureaucratic, some samples are Steve Easternbrook, according to my research. He was the one who made McDonald's fly and uh, famous. Okay. Also in, ja in Japan, the one who I think developed the bullet train, he is Shinji Sogo, a Japanese engineer. He's one uh, sample of a bureaucratic leader. And there's also Winston Churchill, okay? So this is a sample of your bureaucratic leadership. Oh, ito naman, charismatic leadership. You know, as the word says, they use their charisma, right? Uh, people who, who are charismatic are the ones who want to resemble. I say resemble, but not, not entirely um, Kasi meron din tayong transformational leaders. Similar lang sila sa transformational leaders because they use their charisma to influence people. Um, they are able to inspire their team. They are energetic and motivating. And they are also moving forward. Charismatic leaders uh, and transformational leaders always, it's a, there's a thin line. Kasi charismatic leaders um, it always lies in the intention. What is their goal? A charismatic leader often focus on themselves. They capitalize on themselves to be able to influence. A transformational leader wants to be able to make change in the team, not looking into themselves. But it's not a bad thing, though. They just want to, parang pinupuhunan, they, they use themselves to be able to charm other people in a good way. Some other charismatic leaders are Princess Diana, Barack Obama. Diba si Barack, pag nagsalita siya, talagang very influential. Diba? You know, if you've heard him talk, he, was, he, he can move people. Bill Clinton was also a charismatic leader. So most of them are good with words and they're able to influence people. Next is democratic or participative leaders. They always just, in, no, not just, they always include their team members when you're a democratic leader. Okay? You always include the team members in decision-making skills. So, but you still decide. It is still the leader who ends up with the final decision. However, he would always get the input of the team members. It is not just him deciding, but he will get ideas and thoughts of the team members. Now, if you're a democratic leader, the downside to this though is you have, you need time. You cannot be a democratic leader to make a decision right away. So um, time is needed when you are a democratic leader, meaning you cannot make big decisions right away with this type of leadership. Uh, because, of course, obviously, you need multiple people helping you in deciding. Democratic leaders, uh, are examples are Jeff Bezos, diba? during you know, where he would normally ask his people their opinion. Uh, who else? See Richard Branson, right? He would uh, normally get other people's ideas and thoughts and see their opinion about it. Uh, transactional leaders, they are only rewarded based on their performance. So they always are given something in return to the service or to the uh, work that they do. So just like your, for example, your helpers at home, you are only in charge of cleaning this, and in turn, I will just give you this. No buts, no, no questions asked. Versus your autocratic leaders, they are not really, um, it's not because they are paid, but it's more like just do it. 
but no um how do i say it it's not going to be the reward because it's transactional they're rewarded for the type of service that they're given see autocratic they're just told to do it also so similar to the military except the transactional they always kapalit na reward it's just a transaction it's like i'm not going to connect with you i'm paying you to do the job just do it well the autocratic naman it's more on um not more, it's they don't uh what do you call this they don't focus more on the pay it's more just do the job and i will reward you later something like that okay so let me give you a better example um nfl coaches i pay you this much you get that ball that's how they do it you are getting paid this much make sure you give me a touchdown that's a transactional leader yeah and democratic at all lays is fair leadership which uh liz mentioned it orients richard branson where it's a french word lays is fair means allow uh, lays is mean it's a french word that means allow people or leave it be now let them do what they want to do with boundaries of course so these allows leaders to uh work on their own um but to work with boundaries in in certain points where it's just a group effort for you to decide things so there's always team support and this is still supervised by the manager but i tip, they typically just let you discover things now this is especially uh beneficial for the IT industry now people in microsoft they they have a combination of uh si bill gates have a combination of the laces fair so lower people so middle management yeah and down let's say you cannot dictate with these IT folks that this is you have to stick to this they have to be creative so they allow the laces fair from the middle management down however bill gates to his upper management in my research he was sometimes transactional the bill gates he was sometimes transactional pero he, the manage the the uh the what do you call this the culture in in uh microsoft was they were more flexible from the middle management down when when i had the chance to go to microsoft and visit the the office in washington so amazing they had the pantry open pantry for people to just get what they wanted and they can work anywhere and they also had uh yung mga ping pong balls foosballs all these recreational activities for their employees tapos every sulok had a plug for them to be able to work and they can work anywhere diba? as long as they deliver so that's what the laces fair also is okay so naman task oriented as the word says it's all past you know nakalinya nakasulat uh task oriented people uh focus on getting the necessary tasks or series of tasks finished or accomplished so they're the ones who give you a list of the things that you have to do and you have to finish it okay people who are like this are tim cook the ceo of apple right now cheryl sandberg ceo of uh facebook now meta and jack ma apparently jack ma was also a task oriented leader so these leaders are typically less concerned with the idea of catering to employees and more concerned of finishing or making sure that the job is done so yeah so dead man sa anong nararamdaman mo ito yung task just accomplish it okay now people oriented naman is the opposite where the leaders here encourage good teamwork and creative collaboration okay they are focused on organizing supporting and developing their own team the leaders who are people oriented always capitalize on their members they want to build they want to bring out the strengths of their members because they they believe that if they strengthen their members the output is also good so you can also call this the the i uh, know enabler your leaders who enable their people and then there's also the servant leadership 
people like this is uh, an example is Mother Teresa, Oprah, uh, Nelson Mandela, where the type of leaders that they are is to serve. They don't feel entitled that they are leaders, but they go down. Para si Jesus, if you're if you guys are Catholic, the idea niya of leadership is to be able to serve other people. So this is a type of leadership where they always lead by example. So the key word for servant leadership is leading by example. Okay, and then lastly is this type of leadership is transformational leadership. And transformational leadership is, of course, the need and the want to be able to transform. So this naman is the best type of leadership style in business situations that we have now, where uh, they inspire people to be the very best of themselves. And this leads to high productivity and engagement for everybody in the team. Now, do you think transformational leadership just happened, you know, in the last 10 years? It did not. People like Walt Disney did transformational leadership. Because he was the first one who thought about, you know, cartoons back then, diba? Right? No, nobody would have thought about it. Jeff Bezos is also partially a transformational leader. And the best one as, uh, for example, the best one that we have as an example of transformational leader is Steve Jobs. Have you seen his movie with uh, Ashton Kutcher? Try to watch it. Imagine how the Apple TV, Apple computer, it used to be this big. I mean, I'm sure Terrence could have, would know. <laughs> it came with different colors. Then in a few years, it became flat. Na siya. And imagine how we used to have analog phones where it was this thick, the cell phone. And then it became a flip phone or uh, the Nokia phones. But you have to do keypads. Then in a few years, it became touch phone. And now everybody can do a video call. Dati meron pang Skype, right? Now we have Zoom and FaceTime. Imagine that. It was complete transformation. And now our life has changed. Now we cannot leave. With, oh, leave. Now we cannot live without our phones. So it's so crazy, crazy. But these are the types of leadership that we will encounter that we have in our generation now, and that we can be as well in our own department.